<laughs> I'll to share this passage from the course as we start to go within today. As the light comes nearer you, you will rush to darkness, shrinking from the truth, sometimes retreating to the lesser forms of fear and sometimes to stark terror. But you will advance because your goal is the advance from fear to truth. The goal you accepted is the goal of knowledge for which you signified your willingness. Fear seems to live in darkness and when you are afraid, you have stepped back. Let us then join quickly in an instant of light and it will be enough to remind you that your goal is light. Truth has rushed to meet you since you called upon it. If you knew who walks beside you on the way that you have chosen, fear would be impossible. If you knew who walks beside you on the way that you have chosen, fear would be impossible. Again, as we go inward, letting this be an opportunity to hand over anything that's asking for a shift. Realizing that we only want spirit will bring up the parts of us that are not spirit, the thoughts that are not aligned with peace and joy. That's what he's talking about in this section. Says as the light comes nearer, you will rush to darkness, shrinking from the truth. But you will advance because your goal is the advance from fear to truth. Fear seems to live in darkness. And when you are afraid, you have stepped back. He's telling us here this is just part of the process. Fear is going to come up. We are going to turn away from the light. And he gives us the answer too. Let us then join quickly in an instant of light to remember that our goal is light. natural state is light. That's, we could actually say the default, that is the truth. And when we don't 
experience that we actually have made an active decision, active attack on truth. We have decided we want pain and darkness, but that decision isn't very conscious. Part of the plan is that it gets pushed down. But it's interesting, it's very helpful. Jesus talks a lot about that, make it conscious, this resistance to the light, like to notice the decision for darkness, notice the resistance in the mind, the no, kind of, yeah, to find, to find it. It's actually the way to the light, is to find this point of resistance to it. This decision for separation, which can take so many forms. We know we have tried many. Sickness, sadness, isolation, anger, fear. And it may, it may seem difficult to find, it may seem like it is so unconscious that it's hard to find the decision for the darkness. But I think we're getting closer, most of us, you know, and we've done some mind training, we, we can feel it. We can start to recognize the resistance and invite spirit to shine on it and to shine it away because, because light is the default, it's the relaxed state, it's the natural state, it's, it's what's there when when we have seen and released the darkness. It's when nothing is added. It's all that's there. It's what we add that is the problem. It's our you know, fear and resistance. It's what we add like it's another thing jesus talks about you, you don't really want anything that you add to the situation you know but why do we do it what what is that it's the ego it's the it's 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 the fear it's the resistance the reluctance that wants to add something meaningless you know it's, it's meaningless but Yet, we seem to choose that. Sometimes it can be very unconscious. We may not understand why we react a certain way. So we need the guide, we need the inner guide, the light, to help us. We need it badly. Help us out to straighten out this deceived mind. And the guide is very willing. We just need to pray and say, help me out a little bit here. And the guide is there, the inner guide, the spirit. Of course, you know, that's 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 it's the nature of spirit, presence. Of course, it's there.
I think we are a bunch of reluctant saints. <laughs> if you've seen that movie. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, isn't it wonderful that the answer is accessible, the clarity is available, it's very close. It just takes this, you know, this little shift, this inner yes. Yeah, it's very hopeful when Jesus says this, you will advance because your goal is the advance from fear to truth. So he says, even when you shrink, shrink, he says, shrink from the truth, retreat from the truth and seem to go into more darkness or sometimes start terror. So, but you will advance because your goal is the advance from fear to truth. The goal you accepted is the goal of knowledge. The goal of knowledge. This is no worldly knowledge he's talking about. The goal of knowing who you are. The goal of knowing the only thing that can be known. If you knew who walks beside you on the way that you have chosen, fear would be impossible. Even that thought is nice. If you knew who walks beside you. Sometimes I think we, we don't realize. Often we don't realize who walks beside us. Walking with Christ is a beautiful, beautiful section in the course. And he says to somewhere else, remind yourself often, or ask who walks with me. You should ask many times a day, who walks with me? Especially if you feel lost and think you have to figure out something. <laughs> I love that thought. Who who walks with me? And then give some trust to the one who walks with you, the Christ. And I think it's good to see Christ as a, as a relationship. You can communicate with the Christ. What is, what are we doing today? What is my next move? What is my next step? Strike up a dialogue. Join. When we open our mind, guidance, guidance, guidance wants to come in. Guidance becomes more and more obvious. So that's a good start. And if we didn't start the day right yet, we can start the day right now, even if it's become evening suddenly. <laughs> you know, it's not too late. <laughs> And it is helpful to start the day by asking instead of trying to figure out something ourselves. It's best to start the day, the hour, every, every moment that way. Asking.
reconnecting. Releasing the little me. I want to talk about our retreat because, you know, sometimes I've had retreats and I just don't want them to end because coming together is such a powerful way of releasing the little me. It's amazing. We don't have to sit in our own little pods, you know, little apartments or houses or wherever everyone is, you know. Because being together can seem a, like a challenge to the ego, but it's an opportunity to the spirit. Getting out a little bit from your comfort zone. That invites a more open state of mind, prayerful healing can occur. So... Yeah, come on over. <laughs> <laughs> we start on the fourth. And it doesn't matter when we end, you can just stay <laughs> for as long as you as long as you're there. <laughs> yeah, I think. You know, spirit wants to free us from any limitation, from, from the little me, from the, yeah, the blocks in the mind. And it's not about going to a special place, but coming together certainly helps, usually a speed up. Anyone want to share anything here tonight? Well, I joined you in the Netherlands. Mm. It's it's a long time ago, <laughs> seemingly. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm now more than three years in Mexico. But to go to Mexico and I never left. <laughs> wow. Cool. So because I'm missing. Yesterday I was pondering about what makes it that I wanted to join you. What I miss is I want to feel more stabilized. It's because I really can see that it's often that I feel strong and then poof, it's gone. And oh, it's so exhausting <laughs> when you feel that mm -hmm. way. And I think that's 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 what you guys you are the witnesses for that 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 more stabilized and more softness. I'm come from a place that I was always very harsh, and yeah, I want more of that softness. And and for me, it's more like sadness still comes up a lot, and I worked a lot with loss and whatever the ego. <laughs> Mm -hmm. As I still join the movies, but mm -hmm. it's not with questions and answers. So I have my two companions here, but I miss witnesses because I can be helpful for others, but it's nice to have people like you <laughs> that mm -hmm. I'm, I'm longing for people who can lift me up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that not that I'm not o always the the one who's lifting others up because they are always thankful, and it's beautiful. But I want also that feeling, mm -hmm. yeah, of that. Yeah, so beautiful. That's why, yeah, that's really why I I I wanted to join, and I really could see that the ego didn't want it. Yesterday <laughs> I tried. <laughs> several times to send an email and then of course the ego goes 
oh, I don't think it's meant to be. And then I was thinking, what the heck? No, this is the ego. The spirit <laughs> will never tell you, no, don't join. <laughs> I just want to give you a big hug, Joni. I just want to like <laughs> wel welcome you in here. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So it's really for weeks that I was thinking, shall I, shall I not? But yeah, then finally yesterday I felt, okay, just do it. I said yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Good to have you here. In my feeling, I know you for years because I've seen all the YouTubes and all the retreats. Yeah. Look forward to many more connections. <laughs> Who's walking great. with me. Yeah. Yeah. It works both ways. I mean, you can consciously work on on kind of, you know, finding that focus in your mind, but also as you keep doing the healing, as as you keep clearing out, you know, the under the surface pressures and fears and doubts, uh -huh. it actually just gets easier to focus because there's less of that trying to push you away or distract you, or yeah. to keep being here in this holy instant. So. I'm waiting for that light. I really want to go deeper. I really want to come with an experience. Yeah, with light. Mm. <laughs> but I think I'm pushing myself to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably that's the ego. The pusher, yeah. The pusher is the ego. Funny how the ego takes a part of the spiritual path, even. Yeah, I'm beginning to discovering that more and more that, okay, this is the spiritual ego. It's the impatience what still comes up. Mm. You just need to trust what you talked about, Jenny, really. Mm. So yes. I put insecurity on the altar. That came up also for me. Good. <laughs> we join you in that, yeah. Yeah, when we name something like that or identify something we'll see some opportunities to heal it because spirit doesn't just pluck it out you know we'll have to go through it you know we get opportunities yeah, yeah. thank you yeah thank you for for that i still forget that part that yeah. it's like with impatience spirit will give me opportunities to be more patient yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and with the harshness against yourself Spirit will give opportunities for softness, gentleness. Yeah. yeah. He brought me a little neighbor boy who is now two years old and he is so cute. He brings me that joy and that childlike innocence. Mm -hmm. I'm often thinking about how does that really work? I have no clue what joy is. I mm -hmm. didn't grow up that way. Mm. Why am I so difficult to come in touch with that childlike joy? It is so beautiful to have a child as an example, you know, to, to, yes. to not be the one who knows you know, mm. what is God's joy like, you know. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for welcoming me. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here. <laughs> Hey, someone else you'd like to share, Solveig? I'm really looking at something and, and it's uh, repacking and cleaning and being ready for her to come back. And I suddenly realized I'm very terrified of her coming back. I'm terrified of having some days where we're staying here together. And um, a while ago, we wanted to speak with her about something. And if I try to call her, she write back. And I, I realized there's a fear there. There's actually a fear of meeting her tomorrow. It feels like this, this is, it feels like a small child. This, this fear of something is unsaid. Something is unclear. Hmm. Yeah, and that feels like it is in in you, in your mind. You can actually solve it within you. You know, it's not between you and her. Or 
what is it that you need to extend or what is it that you what is the gap in you you know and you can kind of be with that question and you said you feel like a young child yeah it feels like a rejection or something to be rejected something like that something in you yeah you, you're being rejected it's terror feels like it's around anger like believing that she's angry or something that i've done something wrong something yeah i was aware that i wanted to move everything that actually even show we have been here even though we're actually staying on and i've had, I've had asthma all day It's like you're really using this opportunity. Your mind is bringing up what needs healing. Yeah. I don't feel this has anything to do with her. It feels like a, some kind of trauma when I was a child or something. Yeah, maybe some yeah. stuff from when you were a little girl. Yeah. I can just allow this to come up. There's a part of me that wants to understand it right now. I can see that. It's probably not really understandable. <laughs> it doesn't feel understandable. <sighs> It's just suddenly aware of the terror in my mind. What a gift. What a blessing that you can be with that now. You have a whole evening and a whole morning. I don't know what time she comes, but you have you can be with this now and, and allow so much healing, you know. Just repair, you know, by allowing. I feel often when we go through healing like this, spirit surprises us. You get surprised tomorrow when you meet her. Probably all this have fallen away and there is no issue. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. The other day when she wrote that, she's sort of looking forward to Monday. I remember I was like, I had like this. Wow, is she? I had a reaction on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe by the time tomorrow comes, you'll be looking forward to having her there too. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I love you. Mm. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I feel like sharing uh, because um, yesterday I told about mosquitoes and snakes and everything that I want to release that stuff that scares me. And <laughs> now I have been laughing all this too because I sat in the place where has before there were no ants, but now when the tomb started, there became ants everywhere and they're crawling around me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I'm I'm technically not scared of ants. Maybe it's going a little bit easier or something like that. Mm. Releasing about the fear of nature mm. or something like that. Mm. So I, I just wanted Thank to you. tell you how this is going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're facing the ants instead of the snakes. <laughs> Starting with the ants. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, maybe that's a part of the shift. You know, mosquitoes always seem to be by themselves, but ants, you know, they work together. They're collaborating. So maybe there's a symbol in that shift for you too. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Hey, who else would like to share? Lena? Today is Mother's Day here. And I just recognize during the day that I, I feel a bit hurt that my daughters are prioritizing other things. I don't think they ever had time for Mother's Day. And I have this idea and this thought that they always went to their dad, you know, for his birthdays and for his for Father's Day. Did you let them know that you would love for them to come? Well, I told them they are always welcome. But that's different. No, I haven't. You could, you could allow yourself to express it to them. I think it would be lovely for you to come. Maybe they don't know how you're feeling. No, they don't. I mean, I've been hurt by this for years. And also my birthday is coming up soon, so that would be two occasions. They don't prioritize seeing me. And, you know, I send them a question. Would you like to meet up for lunch, buy your lunch out? One is working and the other has to study. She's becoming a doctor. It's just a pattern like that, that it's not very easy to make an appointment where they are both available. Yeah, and maybe it can be as lovely and miraculous to meet them one at a time. I feel like a burden. I don't send the question because I assume that they prioritize other things. So how often in your life do you do that? How often in your life do you assume that someone doesn't want to join with you? I think you're on to a belief here. But actually, I think it's my youngest daughter. Since they moved away from me to their dad when she was six. And maybe, maybe a year or two later, I said, look, at, I want to find an apartment close to you in your village. And she was so upset. She really didn't want that. She was really angry and upset. And also my mom, when I told her about my dad, she took his side and decided not, she didn't want to see me anymore. And she blamed everything on me. And she spoke with the relatives, you know, I was the black sheep, I was the bad one. It's all, you know, the belief in rejection. That's it, that's what it is. It's the belief in rejection. That is so, you know, that has been strong. One dress. But it's actually good that all of this is coming up. Yeah, and I had a lot of friends in my 20s, and I made a mistake. I had a sex with one of my friends boyfriend at the time and but we were, were a whole group of friends and they all broke it off with me I lost everyone yeah so the mind you know you came into this world with a set of beliefs and 
So rejection is a strong belief. And it feels like you're allowing that now. You're looking at it. You're allowing these feelings. Sometimes or always when something is unhealed, there is the desire to get it from the outside. But how would you celebrate you today? How would you show up for what you need? How would you honor your inner being? How can you Allow yourself to yeah, show up for yourself and see something, you know. Even this healing is actually you showing up for yourself. We, we can never get it from the outside world, the love. The outside world is a projection and, and so even when your six-year-old daughter, six or eight, when, when she said, I don't want you to live there, I don't want to meet you, you know, that this is still a deep belief in you, in rejection. It feels, yeah, it feels really beautiful that you allow all these feelings out. Yeah, I'm sure I think he's here. A friend of his said, said, whenever you have something come up, take something from the prayer of St. Francis. And in that prayer is this, you know, let me not ask to be loved as much as to love, you know, let me love instead of ask to be loved, you know. And I think that's it. There's a deep call for love inside. And we think it is the outside world, you know, our relationships, our children or other people that can fulfill it. But it's really the connection with God within that, that's going to answer it. And the extending of the love. So even today, you know, to ask yourself, what do I need today? I have this assumption that my children will not pay attention, you know. Yeah, is there something you want to say to them or extend to them? Or something you want to experience, you know, that you can go for it. I don't think you want connection. Yeah. The desire for connection is actually attracting it. I think this belief in rejection can take many forms. Maybe you reject, you have rejected. Parts of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, not. Yeah. You can ask how how can I not reject? Can I not reject a part of myself here? That may lead you into an inspiration. And we're here. We're a bunch here, a family who <laughs> we love connecting. <laughs> you know 
real connection. This world is, you know, is turned away from God, but when you join with the like-minded, you know, there is connection. There is healing of these difficult places. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. I give you a big hug too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a day every day to honor honor yourself, who you are, who you truly are. Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, they honor the role once a year, but every day we're worthy of even more than that. Even more. And that acknowledgement. That's the truth. Yeah, yeah good. That's, that's it for tonight. Mm -hmm. Unless there's anyone who has a share that just needs to come out. <laughs> Otherwise, this message, you know, Jenny was just saying to you, Lena, that's that's for all of us. You know, every day is a day of deep honoring. Deep honoring of who you are. Yeah, let's become present with it. Let's really it. Love you all. <laughs> Enjoy your day and your evening. <laughs> Bye, South Africa. <laughs> <laughs>